Hello, I'm David with Santan Solar, your one-stop shop for all your solar needs. And today we're going to be discussing a topic that gets brought up by our customers and by uh, folks you know, who in the solar industry. And it's about shading, how much the shading can impact your efficiency of your solar panels that you have set up. Now, shading is a concern that happens with any kind of solar array that is built. The concern is, uh, what do you do about it? How to mitigate it? How to, how to make it uh, less susceptible, more resilient to shading? Now, shading can occur from a lot of things. It can occur from trees and obstacles, buildings. Even if it's on your roof, you'll have like uh, vent pipes and chimneys and, and uh, AC units up top and things like that that can overshadow as the sun moves across the horizon. You'll have the shading effects that happen. Depending how your panels are mounted and in what, how much open area that they're around, shading can be a problem. But the best way to go about that is to find out ways in which you can do shading uh, mitigation, basically. Now there are several things you can do for shading. A lot of it has to do with your wiring configuration. A wiring configuration can also help uh, mitigate and also lessen the impact of shading that occurs on your panels. Now of course, if there's anything else that you might have to concern yourself with is where your panels are going to be. Is it going to be ground mounted? Like I said earlier, is it going to be a ground mount or what have you? Ground mounts have a tendency to be more susceptible to shading because of the trees and buildings and fences and things like that that as the sun goes over across the horizon, the long shadows of such obstacles can be more apparent. Now, there are several ways you can mitigate the use of uh, mitigating shading. First part is, is that you can do a wiring configuration. Series and parallel wiring has a way of impacting the way that shading impacts your system. First one is that when you do a series wiring configuration for your panels, you've got to understand that it is one of the easiest ways to set up your panels. That means you're going to have panels all linked together and what they're going to be doing is they'll be daisy chained from positive to negative positive to negative and in a string uh, that's usually the simplest way to do things so when panels are put into a series in other words they're going to be daisy chained one to the other plus to minus plus to minus and to make a string now the good thing about the series is that your uh, current will remain the same and that your uh, voltage will go up they'll add up so that means that you can have a high voltage, low amp uh, set of strings uh, for your array. Now that's a good thing to have because then you can have some much longer runs, longer wire runs from your arrays so that you can have a lot of voltage going through that. So that's a good plus for that. The other thing is that it's very simple to wire it up. Very simple. Your connectors are already built onto your arrays, or excuse me, your panels, and that they can be daisy chained together. And then you'll just need fewer wires. Now the downside of this is that when there is a shading hitting on one of the panels, as we've been discussing, as you can see, some of these panels have some shading on it, like it is. Something like this happens, it affects the whole string. Meaning that, that once that uh, panel is being shaded on, the other panels are going to be affected because the voltage and the current that's passing through it is going to be affected by the one that's covered. So it can drop its significant leads, voltage, and amperage. That way, you won't have uh, as a great of impact and efficiency in your system. Now in parallel, now we're going to talk about a little bit of parallel. When you put panels in parallel, that means it's going to be uh, set up so that each panel will be set up individually. You'll have a three-way connector to make a parallel, three to four or five, you use a U-combiner boxes to do that. And what happens when you put uh, panels into a parallel configuration, the parallel allows the panel to work independently of each other. That's great in that if a panel gets shaded on one, the others don't get affected because they'll be operating independently at their full potential. Now, when you have a parallel system set up like that, understand that your voltages will remain kind of low. It's going to be based on the panel that you have that you're going to be using. So if you have a 40 volt panel that you have and you have a bunch of them in parallel, it's going to be a 40 volt system as opposed to series. If you have four of them in, in row, if it's 40 volts, it's going to be like 160 volts coming through that. But the parallel itself means that your amps, your current, will rise. So if you have three amps a piece on those panels and use four of them, you can have like 12 amps coming through to your charge controller. But your voltage will remain the same as the individual panels. Now the nice thing about having things in parallel is that if something is affecting a panel, the other ones are still operating. Remember that when I said that if something happens to one panel, the others don't get affected by that because it's running in a parallel system. That means the current might reduce a bit, but your voltage stays the same. And that is good in helping your charge controller mitigate that, that voltage change. 
So it, it's really beneficial for that. And it helps it's make it more resilient to shading. Now, the downside of that is that it's a little bit more complicated wiring. That means that you have to have parallel adapters or run it through a combiner box and all sorts of extra wiring and connections and materials to do this with. Now, when it comes to troubleshooting, it's a little bit less problematic because if you have a system that drops down a panel, remember you can work on one panel, the other ones are still performing because it doesn't, one bad panel doesn't affect the rest. As in series, one panel affects the whole array, so it takes a little longer in a series for you to troubleshoot. You gotta troubleshoot the string and then you gotta narrow it down to which panel it is. So it can be a little bit more arduous. In the parallel system, not so much, but it does make the wiring a little more complex. Also, that when you're trying to make a long run from array to charge controller, your runs are going to be needing thicker and bigger wire because you're going to be having to accommodate more current in a parallel system. That means that as the current is rised, you might need a bit heavier duty wire to make longer runs in a parallel system. And the nice thing about that is that, uh, as we discussed earlier, when it comes to shading, parallel works great. Now, there are several things you can do to mix the two. Series and parallel connections can also help a benefit. The combination of the two. You can have a string in series to generate the kind of voltage you're looking for, and you can have several strings. Some can be facing a certain little direction, and others can face in the opposite directions so that you can get the best from the early morning to afternoon. Uh, I was discussing earlier in the series connections, understand that when you put a series panels together, you're going to have a bit better increase in power from early morning to late afternoon so that you can get the optimal amount when you have it in series. Remember, it's going to be a higher voltage, so the whole ray of sun on a series is, is going to give you a better optimization of that. In a parallel system, it's kind of, uh, you don't get as much uh, in the early morning, late afternoon in parallel, because if you have one panel facing one way, another panel facing the other, it's just going to be a consistent amount. You won't get any increases because as one is having sun in the, in the morning time period, and then it starts to wane over into the afternoon, this will start losing more light, but the other panels will start gaining more power. So it'll kind of even itself out. And as discussed earlier, there are going to be a, a way you can combine these two together. And that means that if you have a series panel with good voltage going through, and then you can parallel that with another similar uh, string so that you can get two strings in parallel, giving you the amount of power that you want. And that way you can have longer runs to your charge controller or to your parallel adapters. And that way you'll have enough power in your early mornings and late afternoons as you're starting to get panels in series bus and connected by parallel. So it's a good way to help reduce the, the problem of shading. Because shading in itself is just something you have to consider. Where you put your panels, how you're gonna put your panels, what configuration you're gonna use. You want them all in series, you want them in parallel, or do you want a combination of both? Using a combination of both is the best way to optimize that. Another way are there's technologies out there. You can use optimizers. Optimizers themselves will help the performance of each panel produce as much as it can. Other units like grid tied systems use uh, microinverters. These microinverters are on each panel, and what that does is it gives the best potential of each panel. Optimizers themselves are, again, you, you have a little more complexity added to this. However, it'll help each panel produce at its highest efficiency and not affect the other ones that are going on. Should there be something that uh, one gets covered or shaded, or you have to replace it for whatever reason that you have. And I'll be showing you just a little bit of how the series and parallel connections are done. Earlier I mentioned that having a panel set up in certain arrays, such as series or parallel, can help with the shading problems and concerns that people will have. Right now, I got two panels sitting right here, and they're both in a series combination. Well, as I said, the wiring is very simple. You have the positive negatives of each panel daisy chained together like this, at which point you then have your connection wires that are on one end of the array that go all the way over to the other side of the array, making your connection wires that run to your charge controller. Now this means that each panel is going to have its voltages added together and they're going to be sharing that voltage and the amperage is going to stay down to like whatever the panels are. These are probably around seven to six amps each so that means that there's going to be a six to seven amp 
and doubling the voltage that these will be putting out going to your charge controller. Now, the downside as we discussed earlier about having shading affecting a, a panels in series is right now my shadow is covering one. If I'm standing in front of this, this panel is going to be losing efficiency because it's being shaded, some cells are being covered, and that means that the overall efficiency of this array is going to drop down significantly because then that means that whatever this is passing through is affecting this panel's uh, efficiency going out to the charge controller. So that means that when you're in series, you get good voltage, but it's susceptible to shading and coverage, should there be snow, dirt, trees, obstacles in the way. And that way you have to figure a way to make sure that your series is in full sun a lot. Uh, it's great for ground mounts that have it open fields. You can do things a lot like this. That way you can get the most voltage out of it. Plus you can have uh, much longer runs in series. But let me show you what it looks like when it's doing in parallel. I'm back again, and here we are showing the difference in the series in parallel. This time, I have the two panels in parallel. That means this one will be operating independently at its voltage that it has, as well as this one. And that means that the positives and negatives are all connected together, all together this way, paralleling them so that you have your positive negative going to your charge controller. This is what's going to be going through it. Now, as I said earlier, when you do something in parallel, what's going to happen is that your amps, your current, is going to add up. So if this was a 7 amp and this was a 7 amp, you'd have 14 amps going through this. If this was a 35 volt, 35 volts, you'll only have 35 volts. Remember, it, the panels will operate independently, but their amps will increase because you'll be adding them up. That makes it great for something like this, so that if this one gets shaded, like I'm in the front of this panel again, that means that this panel is going to be deficient in what it's going to produce. However, this panel on this side won't have such a problem because it's going to be operating fully. It's not affected by the panel that's here. Since it's hooked in parallel, there's no way that this panel is going to affect that one. That's what makes it great when it comes to like any repairs or concerns, because if you have to do work on this panel, it's not going to affect this one. This will still produce what it's going to produce. Now, that means that if you have to remove this, your amps will, of course, drop, but your voltage will remain the same. This makes it great for a lot of reasons, because that way if shading occurs, you have a lot of trees or a lot of uh, obstacles that do cover up some of your panels during times. This is the, probably the best way to go about it. Now, as I have said earlier about combining the two, that means you put things in series and parallel. If these are in parallel, these could be facing a certain way of the sun as it goes to the evening, and then you can have another string in series facing a different direction like early morning to noon and then you have something that's going to be a little bit more westerly as opposed to more easterly and that way you'll be getting the benefit of the sun's travel throughout having a very consistent uh, efficiency throughout your system some in series they'll generate to you to get that bigger voltage and then in parallel so that as the sun doesn't affect one string as efficiently as the other as the sun keeps going down giving the most to another string in parallel you lose very little efficiency and that's a very good way to help mitigate any kind of shading concerns or issues that you may have this is david with santan solar and i want to let you know that if there's any questions that you have feel free to give us a call or just get us online at www.santansolar.com your one-stop shop for all your solar needs and then we'll be glad to help you with any kind of concerns and any equipment that you might need to go ahead and set up the best array for your system